Hello and welcome to another edition of Fangirl Thursday. I am very excited to have you guys with me tonight. I have a very special guest for you all. Her name is Allison Wells and her brand new book just came out this week and it is called Living Water. It is a fantastic read that I cannot wait to jump into and start chatting about with you guys. But before we have the author come on and join us, I have a special treat for you guys. We actually have a book trailer for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get that popped up on the screen for you guys and play it for you. Roxy, God will meet you where you are. You don't know my past. I've heard enough of people concerned about it. I know you've been married five times, and you've lost more than anyone ought to lose. I know you've been married five times, and you've lost more than anyone ought to lose. I have been married five times to five very different men. One was puppy love. The first boy to ever pay me attention. He called me his muse. One I thought was a good, hard-working man until I discovered that his fists were just as hard. Another was a kind, beautiful soul who I only married as a favor. There was never anything romantic between us. And there was one I thought was a new and there was one I thought was a new lease on life until I realized he was still preoccupied with his former love. Then there was the love of my life, the very reason my soul existed, but nothing lasts forever. Bitter at the world, I became what the whispers said I was. Roxy? Roxy? I want to be a better version of me. Can I offer you living water? That was the book trailer for Allison Wells' Living Water. And now we are going to have the author herself join us. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us today, Allison. I am so excited to have you here. Hello. I'm sorry, I muted hey. you. I just unmuted you. There you are. Sorry. Thank you. Hi. Hello. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, tell me a little bit about that book trailer. Did you guys film that yourselves? <laughs> we did. My husband is actually a video producer, so we made it ourselves. It stars one of my very best friends, Marissa, um, and actually her husband, Ryan. They were nice enough to, um, to act for me. Uh, so it's, my husband's a video producer. We just enjoy doing it. We've done trailers for three out of my four books now. Awesome. Awesome. I really enjoyed that. Um, what can you tell us about your new release, Living Water? Well, Living Water is based on the woman at the well from the New Testament in John 4. Um, it's, uh, it's the story of Roxy Deprive. She gets married five times because that is what happens with the woman um, at the well. Uh, in the Bible. So we go through Roxy's five different marriages to five very different guys um, and just kind of go along the journey with her to see where that takes her. Why did you feel like this story needed to be told? Um, I have always been intrigued with a lot of biblical stories. And this was one that always got me because the woman at the well doesn't have a name. Um, She's just the woman at the well or the Samaritan woman. And that has always bugged me. I am a huge name nerd. I love names. I love everything mm -hmm. about names. Um, so for me, she just needed a name. And I guess I just really felt like, what was, you know, what was her story? You see these things, you know, um, especially in the Bible, it could be a song. It could be a photograph that just make me wonder, like, what's going on? What's the story behind this? And I just felt like I had to write it. 
not that you've been married five times, but do you share any traits with your character, Roxy? Um, Roxy and I are very close to the same age. She's, mm -hmm. I think, just like two or three years older than me. So the growing up was definitely very similar. In the beginning of the book, um, all the chapters are named after songs from the mid to late 90s. Um, there's a lot of mention of like Nirvana, Green Day, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bands like that. And that's the stuff I grew up listening to when I was in high school. So I think the the life life career, the, the span of her life kind of echoes mine a little bit. I've only been married once, but um, just kind of that timeline of how her life goes similarly mm -hmm. follows mine. So are you a cook as well? No, <laughs> I can make three things. I can only make three things and not very well. I'm not a cook in the least. Um, uh, it, it, yeah, no, I, you don't want me to cook for you. <laughs> so that was all Roxy in that part. Yeah, Roxy also <laughs> loves to clean. Not me. Not no. your thing Roxy, either. That's how she like. That's her coping mechanism mm -hmm. is cleaning. That's how she de-stresses. Mm -hmm. No, no, not me at all. For readers who may be a little put off um, by the genre or think that this book is somewhat maybe going to come across as preachy, what do you say to those people? Uh, well, they may think that. I have no idea. But really, <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, I, I can't determine how people will interpret it. But any real biblical aspect of it doesn't come in until the very end of the book. Mm -hmm. And I hope that it's not preachy or, uh, you know, I, I never want to hit people over the head with, mm -hmm. with Christianity or with a biblical message or anything. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it, I mean, it is based on something out of the Bible. So, you know, if that isn't your cup of tea, this may not be, but I have had people who are non-Christians read it and say that that doesn't seem to bother them at all. So. I am a Christian. I have read the book. Um, I was leery going into it just because I thought this is not going to be my cup of tea. First of all, holy crap. She's been married five times. I'm a girl from South as well. And we, I mean, I can relate to the small town gossip and everything yeah. um, that she talks about and that she went through in, in the book. And um, I could absolutely see me at lunch with my girlfriends and she walk in and I'd be like, do you know who that is? There's and, Roxy. Um, yeah. yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh. Way to point a finger at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't think this book was, um, was preachy or anything like that. That wasn't my reservation going into it. My reservation was is that it's going to be a contemporary book. It's going to be a serious book. It's going to make me think way more than I want to when I'm reading a book and it's going to make me cry. And that it, it probably did all of that. It did all of that. Um, but you know what? I have to say, when it was all said and done, it was worth the roller coaster. It was worth the ride. I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the tears. I felt so much for Roxy and what she went through to the point where um, I shared this story with Allison off, off the air. And I'll go ahead and tell you guys about it now. Um, there's a point in the story where something tragic happens in Roxy's life and it shook her to the core and me as well, to the point that I put down my book. I left the, the bedroom. I went into the living room where my husband was. I climbed up on the love seat with him. I wrapped myself around him like a monkey and I just bawled my eyes out. And honestly, I think for an author to, to be able to convey those kind of feelings and to put that kind of emotion and bring out a fictional character in that way that it resonates so profoundly with the reader, then you've nailed it. You've done your job. Um, Thank you. The book really stuck with me um, days after I finished it. I was like, 
okay, I, I don't know what I can read now. What am I going to do with myself after this? Hello, book hangover. And I went in the complete opposite direction. I'm actually reading a psychological thriller in which <laughs> a girl um, is dealing with her doppelganger and she thinks someone's out to kill her and she doesn't know if she's crazy and it's all in her head or if there really is a such thing as a doppelganger. So I went way in the other direction. <laughs> um, so as a reader, I would say, um, even if you're not a religious person, even if contemporary is not normally your thing, I think everyone can take something away from this story and can find someone in this story that they relate to um, her, her friendships that she developed. Um, yes, she was married several times, but you know, she went about it the right way. She wasn't a floozy or anything. Um, right. I just, I, it was a really good story and I'm glad it was recommended to me and I'm glad that I, took the time and sat down and read it. And I definitely recommend it for you guys out there as well. And I'll be posting a link up for you guys in just a few minutes. <clears throat> um, what do you hope people take away from Roxy's story when it's all said and done and they've cried their last tear, <laughs> they've tossed their last tissue. What do you hope they walk away from the story having learned or having experienced? I really hope that every woman who reads this book can identify with Roxy in some way. And I mean, maybe that's kind of a sad thing to say because her life is pretty crummy um, for the majority of it. But I think everyone who reads it will be able to identify with Roxy or, you know, be able to identify with someone else that's in there. Um, she has a, ends up with a, a one constant friend throughout the entire book. And uh, you know, like, I think people, people know someone who's been through situations. If they haven't been through mm -hmm. the situations that Roxy's been through themselves, they know someone who has. Yeah. So I really hope that they can either identify as one of the friends of Roxy or, you know, as someone maybe um, who's been whispering about her and, uh, and has, has contributed to the gossip that surrounds her. So, um, okay. but I, I want them. Yeah. 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 We've all been there. Yeah. haven't we? We've all been there, but I really hope that people who read it can come away knowing that there's always hope. Um, I think that's the big message that I want as a takeaway is that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter the situations that you found yourself in, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And that's really what Absolutely. I want people to get when they read it. Yeah. Despite the failed marriages and, it, and the story isn't just about the failed marriages. Um, she has a rocky relationship with her family. Um, friends and, and relatives seem to come and go out of, out of her life a lot. And she really has to just learn how to rely on herself. And mm -hmm. I enjoyed that aspect of her personality and I can really relate to that part of her personality. Um, you know, having to, to kind of just buck up for lack of a better word and, you know, just take responsibility and realize that, you know, there's not anybody else. It's just you and you're going to have to get through it one way or the other. So, right. and, and she does that. She's very tenacious. Um, so, but again, I, I don't know that I could have gone through the constant, just the, the the reoccurring pain and things that she has that happens in her life. I don't know that I personally, when I finished the book, I thought, I don't know that I could have been as strong as Roxy. I don't know that I could have turned things around in the end, the way that she tried to do. Right. Um, well, and, I, but she's not strong throughout the book and that's part of it. You know, people have asked me, with um, uh, without giving anything away, like um, with one of the husbands in the middle who was not a great person, why why was she still there? You know, why did she keep the marriage going? Not that it lasted long, but why? Mm -hmm. I was like, Be because that's you know, you want everyone wants a happy ending. No one goes into their life thinking exactly. I'm going to get married five times and be known as the town floozy. Exactly, you know? and you so, know. She was also raised that way 
You know, she, Mm -hmm. if you pay attention in the beginning to where she talks about her upbringing, especially the dynamic between her mother and her father, then some of that makes sense later on as to why she stays as long as she does, why she puts up with the things that she does, because she grew up in a household where while her father may not have been physically abusive to um, her mother, at the same time, her mother didn't really have a lot of backbone towards him. Right. You know, she kind of sat back and she let him make the decisions and she just did what she thought a dutiful wife was supposed right. to do. Exactly. So exactly. That's what Roxy was raised to believe. That's the dynamic that she saw. So of course, going into her marriages, she's going to feel that same way because she didn't know any different. Well, and, and it says <laughs> in the beginning that she was raised, she was, um, in a family of four children, four daughters, she's the youngest mm-hmm. daughter. So she's the youngest of four girls. <laughs> and she was instructed as a child to, you know, sit still and be cute, mm-hmm. you know? And so she wasn't really, you know, um, um, conditioned to go on to great things. You know, that was for the older sisters who the parents invested a little bit more time in, but as the baby, it was just sit still and be cute. And so mm-hmm. she doesn't really know how to do anything else. You know, um, and and not that she's, you know, a beautiful Barbie type, but, um, Mm -hmm. you know, she's just, she's not been trained uh, for, for greatness, you know, in terms of how her family raised her. I lost my place on my notes. See, I made a little note sheet so I'd be prepared. (laughs) Before we go on any further, because you do have other books I want to talk about and tell everybody about, I want to pop this up really quick and show you guys the cover again for Living Water. Now, if everything is functioning correctly, yes, I see it. Over in the comments section, you should see a link to bookstoread.com. If you click on that, it will take you to Living Water and it will give you all the places you can purchase the ebook and also the print copy as well for you guys who are interested in reading it. I do see that Tanya is interested in checking it out. Thank you for popping in, Tanya and Jody. So glad to have you guys here. Um, If you guys have any questions, go ahead and get those popped over into the comment section and we will get those answered for you. And also any comments or questions that you post during tonight's live, you will be entered to win an ebook copy of Living Water as well. So definitely stay tuned, make comments, ask questions doesn't necessarily have to be about living water. If you've read any of um, Allison's other books, you can ask questions about those as well. Um, so telling, uh, diving into that, tell us about some of your other books. This is your fourth or fifth book. This is my fourth book. Yeah, this is my fourth. Um, and this is my first contemporary book. All the rest of them are historical fiction, um, which is generally my preference. So doing something mm-hmm. that was, um, um, modern was was hard for me and um so um so my other three books we have bell of the night which was also published with monster ivy publishing mm-hmm. um uh, all all christian books um or christian esque um but <laughs> bell of the night is about a a uh, prostitute who falls in love with a preacher so that's um, very interesting yeah i i I call what I write gritty Christian fiction um, mm-hmm. because it tackles hard topics yeah. and it's not your typical, like I, when you read a romance or a, especially a Christian romance, it follows the same story arc. They're all the same. And there's nothing wrong with the formula, but mm-hmm. I wanted something that was a little bit different that, that dove a little bit deeper because just because you call yourself a Christian does not mean your life is immune to hard things. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I've been trying to get across in my books. But so in Belle of the Night, um, you've got Belle, who is a prostitute in 1915 New Orleans, um, and she falls in love with a preacher. And um, um, let's see, When Waves Break, right, so I'll back up. Um, War Torn Heart, which was my first novel that came out, uh, takes place during World War II, go figure with the title. And that follows Abby, who lives in the foothills of South Carolina, and she falls in love with a Clemson cadet, because I live in Clemson, go Tigers. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> um, and World War II breaks out. And so her boyfriend and her brother mm -hmm. go off to war. And, um, and you <clears throat> just see her perspective and a lot of the heartbreak that comes from war and, um, and what happens with that. And then the sequel to that is um, one waves break and that follows twins Eve and Juliet Nicholas and they are growing up in Myrtle Beach because that's where I grew up um, in the late 1960s and the whole free love movement kind of ruins their lives um, and so they kind of have to build the pieces back up so that's a very quick overview of my books <laughs> I am going to share a little stalker link with you guys really quick. If you are interested in checking out more information on Allison Wells, as well as all of her books, if you look over in the comments section, <laughs> you will see a link to her website where you can find about um, the other books. You can get um, buy links there. You can also get links to her Facebook and Instagram there as well. Um, there we go. Bringing us back. Share the stalker link. I'm catching up on my notes. <laughs> what are some of who are some of your favorite authors? What other authors out there inspire you? Oh my gosh. Um, <sighs> I read just about everyone. Um, Dorothea Benton Frank has been one of my favorites and I cried when she died last year. Um, I love her. I love Ellen Hildebrand. Um, I really love reading Liz Curtis Higgs, who's a Christian author. She is actually the person we emailed back and forth years ago. And she was the one who kind of told me if anyone can be, a, if she could be a writer, I could be a writer. So she was really the one who inspired me to actually sit down and write. Um, I love her books, but I really, I'll read just about anyone, anything, love women's fiction, Christian fiction, I love historical fiction, rom-coms. I read just about all of it. So nice. What are you currently reading? Um, I just finished, wait, I'm going to have to tell you what it is. Hang on. I just finished. This is why I posted to Instagram so I could tell you. <laughs> I just finished The First Wife's Secret by Claire Amarty. Wait, there, can you see the cover? There, The yes. First Wife's Secret. I just finished that one yesterday, and that was very interesting. Um, not my usual genre, I think, but um, but it was really interesting about a family that kind of is falling apart at the seams. So that was good. I don't know what's next because I'm busy doing book launch stuff, so. If you could meet any living author, who would it be and why? Oh my gosh. Liz Curtis Higgs, probably. That would be like a dream come true. Why? If she's watching. <laughs> why? Um, well, like I said, she um, she was kind enough to email back and forth with me. She, If you're not familiar with Liz Curtis Higgs, she writes um, historical fiction and she also writes Bible studies. And I've done several of her Bible studies. And, um, and so I guess I'd emailed her um, before doing one of those and we emailed back and forth and she is just such a kind soul and so encouraging. And I think in a world where there are so many people competing in the market, no mm -hmm. matter what that market, doesn't matter if you're an author, doesn't matter if you're a YouTuber, doesn't matter if you're a, an accountant, you know, there's so much cutthroat, you know, go with me, not with them. And she is so encouraging to, at the time I was maybe like 23, 24 years old, you know, to tell me that, that I could do it, to, to sit down and, and start writing. So she's really been an inspiration for me. And um, I would love, love, love to meet her. I'd also really love, oh, can I have two? Yes. I'd really love to meet Diana Gavaldon too, who wrote Outlander. And she and I actually emailed back and forth before the show started, before the TV show started. Um, my best friend introduced me to um, Outlander and, and we, um, we were Outlanders together, so. I'd love to meet her too. She's awesome. <laughs> we are going to open it up to questions from you guys. We are going to start with the first question from Mary. And she says, how long ago did you write the first draft for Living Water? Hi, Mary. Um, someone asked me this earlier. 
I think maybe <laughs> about eight years ago. It's been a long time. Um, so yeah, it was between six to eight years ago. Um, and I had a hard time finishing it, like figuring out what happened at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you pointed out a few minutes ago that that there is a big tragedy that happens in the story. And so I guess I kind of mm -hmm. like didn't know what to do after that. Like, how do I end it? So I struggled with that for a while. But yeah, I probably wrote my initial draft probably eight years ago. I do like the way you ended it. And I thought the person who comes back to see her at the very end, which of course made me cry again, was perfect. And it, it just, I could see, I could see that happening. I mean, you know, that being the, the real outcome in a situation like that. Um, right. Yeah. That's all I can say without spoiling it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely. It, it ended. Yeah. It, it made me cry, but it was a good cry at the end. It's a good cry good. at the end. We have Tanya with us tonight. Hello, Tanya. I'm so glad you popped in to join us tonight. Tanya is a huge reader. I don't know if she's ever actually made it to one of my lives before, so I'm really going to call her out right oh, now. Oh, good job. Um, <laughs> she's a huge author supporter. She loves to read. If you guys don't follow her on Facebook, you need to be her friend because she has two gorgeous yellow labs, Maverick and Sam. As she likes to call them, they are search and destroy. And she posts the most hilarious pictures of them almost on a daily basis. Those dogs are so comical. Um, Tanya is hilarious in her own right and she's always posting funny little memes and talking about being at the grocery store and looking for the Debbie snack cakes and she's just <laughs> she's just funny and we actually met on Facebook I came across her I, I've totally gone on another tangent um, I came across her on Facebook because I saw pictures of her dogs and they were so cute and I love labs and um, she actually came to Savannah with a author who she was vacationing with and they were going to book signings and things with. And when she came to town, she reached out to me. So I took off that afternoon from work, went into downtown Savannah, met a complete stranger and her friend for dinner. That's <laughs> my Lady favorite Island city. <laughs> Savannah is my happy place. So, and hey, it's let's go so anytime. Pretty there. So pretty there. I live about 30 minutes outside of Savannah, probably about 40 to 45 minutes from downtown. Um, and when I was working, I actually worked in Savannah and I now work from home. So I, I don't have that drive in anymore, but yeah, that's how Tanya and I came about <laughs> and she's been a fantastic friend and um, I'm so happy to have her here. I've completely just, taking over this this live but um, <laughs> i digress we'll get back to your question she wants to know um if you've ever thought about doing a screenplay because she loved your book oh video. Gosh. um um kind of say so my husband does video production um that's one of his passions and and so we've talked about collaborating like i write all of the trailers um and he films them so it works out mm -hmm. really well for me, uh, but I've, I've thought about it. I don't really know how to write a screenplay. Um, like when I write a book, it plays as a movie in my head, you mm -hmm. know? So I like, it's, a, it's already a screenplay in my head, but in terms mm -hmm. of writing it out the way a screenplay would look, I'm a little clueless. I've, I've tried with some short things and my mm -hmm. husband has actually helped me out a lot. Cause he, he's, he's made full length movies. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but I mean, I've thought about it, but I don't know that that's my, uh, my area of expertise. I thought the book trailer was really good because usually when somebody puts together a book trailer, it's just different little snippets and pictures and, yeah. and maybe some lines from the, from the book or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with those. I enjoy those, but this was different with the actual yeah. actors and the live. We're, over you know? we're just overachievers. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. 
Um, if you guys have any additional questions for Allison, um, go ahead and pop those over. See, I'm not the only one that was a fan. Tanya loved it too. Yay. Jody, if you are still out there listening, if you've got any questions, get those loaded up over there. Mary, if you have any additional questions for us, you can pop those in as well. Remember, we are giving away an ebook copy at the end of this. All you have to do is comment and participate in order to be entered. So make sure you go ahead and get any questions or comments posted over there. Um, since I went on my tangent about dogs, do you have any pets, Allison? I do. We have a dog named Sally who is a Chihuahua Jack Russell mix. And she is the most high-strung thing you've ever met in your entire life. I was going to say, I bet she bounces off the walls. She's she's this big, and she can jump four feet off the ground. So oh, it's wow. a, a very dangerous combination. <laughs> uh, um, so we have her, and then we've got, um, we have three cats named um, Delilah, Hobbs, and Taco. Um, and we have two turtles as well, and a couple of fish. So, yeah, I don't know. We've, we've got a, a, a menagerie. I have three dogs. I have a bloodhound, a lab, and then a mixed breed. I have th roughly 30 chickens. I don't count. Ooh. But I can walk outside and tell you when one is missing. <laughs> um, and then I have two pot belly pigs who are very, oh my very gosh. bad. And they get into everything. I... You know, my husband told me for the longest time, you do not want pigs. You do not want pigs. And I caught him on a good day and I came home with two pigs and they are a handful. There's nothing they don't get into. They're worse than two puppies. Oh, see, and that, so, uh, let me, let me tell you a story about how we got our youngest cat taco. So the, our veterinarian's office had put up on Facebook, this little kitten that they called burnt spicy taco that was available for adoption. And so I, I was like, oh, this is so cute. Oh, my gosh. And my youngest child is now five. And so he's getting a little older and the puppy was getting a little older. And, um, and so I was like, hmm. And so I texted my husband and I said, can I get a taco? And I don't eat tacos. Like Cinco de Mayo was yesterday. And I don't, I don't eat tacos. So he knew. He was like, what? I said, I just want to know if I can get a taco. And he said, um, I guess. You know, so I took that as confirmation and I went down to the vet's office and got that cat. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and then he came home and was like, what is this? And I said, you said I could get a taco. So I did. I he, love that. He was not happy with me after that. But. My husband was actually thumbing through Facebook and he said, oh, these people have, have pigs for sale. And I said, oh, I, I still want a baby pig. I'm going to need two because... <laughs> Pig's gonna they need a baby. friend. Yeah, and he thumbed on by the next day. I was like, did you call about those pigs? He's like, no. And I'm like, well, I'm really interested. And then he came in later that afternoon, and he's like, they're still there. We can go and get them. Oh, my. And I'm only buying you one. And I'm like, well, how much should they cost? And he's like, $50. And I'm like, yeah, I got 50 yeah. You got 50 We're getting two of them. And so off we went. And, and uh, I, love yeah, it. I, I came home with, with two pigs and love it. I don't mean, I, I love them to death. Um, but they are so bad. Um, when I let them out, when they're in their pen, they're just lazy. They just lay around and they're like, whatever. When I let them out, they have to go into all the chicken coop and they have to look for eggs and be nosy and all that. Oh, and boy. then, um, we had a garden and we, we didn't do it this year. So like the tomato cages are just laying on the ground. Will Scooter right. keep walking through the tomato cage and he'll get stuck in one and then he'll take off across the yard <laughs> squealing like somebody's killing him. And I'm like, Lord, what do the neighbors think's going on over here? Well, it's that saying, <laughs> squeal like a stuck pig, right? And so he got stuck in one and he went just last week, he got stuck in one for the second time and he ran into the pen and he fell out like somebody had shot him dead. And of the two pigs, he's the least friendly. And I don't know why, because oh. Lord knows I have done all I can to be this pig's best friend. Um, 
And my husband's like, I think we're going to have to cut it off of him. And I'm like, as in the bolt cutters, we're going to scar him for life. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> in the midst of my husband trying to get him to stand still in the corner, and we're trying to box him in and all this, part of it broke off. And then he ran towards me. And... And I was able to grab the larger part and it just slid down over his buttocks and he stepped out of it. But he pouted for like three days. Oh my gosh. Not having it. And so, yeah, it's an adventure having pigs. They're, they're very, and even when you move things up and out of the way and think, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We do have another question. <laughs> oh, I feel free not to answer. I do like that question. <laughs> Were any of Roxy's husbands based on men you had dated in real life? Um, I mean, yeah, I would guess. Uh, so, yes, one of her husbands I did kind of base on my own husband. Um, he enjoys... You know, like just the at-home date night, cooking a steak on the grill, watching a movie, you know, popping popcorn. So that so you know, Adam would have been based. Yeah. On- yes. So, so that would make sense that Adam was based on my husband. Um, I think um, Josh was kind of just based on every high school guy I knew. I grew up, mm-hmm. uh, I grew up in Myrtle Beach. So surfer stuff was really in when I was in high school and we were at the beach. And so Josh was really kind of just modeled after every guy I knew in high school Mm -hmm. who had that surfer haircut and, and, you know, big into like Nirvana and, and, and whatnot. And, and all the, uh, the, the, uh, like alternative punk culture that was kind of going on there. So, um, they're definitely based, I mean, not anyone specific for Josh, but yeah, just like everyone in high school. Um, the other three, yeah, maybe not so much. Um, I mean, I'm sure I've drawn little bits of people that I knew into them, but not like set specifically on a certain person. So I haven't dated that many people. I've been with my husband since I was 17. So, (laughs) so, um, yeah, haven't, I didn't date a whole lot. Were you high school sweethearts? We were not high school sweethearts. We we d- haven't met. We've known each other since we were thirteen. Um, we did meet in in high school when we started high school. But um, we were in the band together, and we had a, almost all of our classes together. Um, but but we didn't start dating until we got to college, and it was like we I don't know, we were like best friends for four years throughout high school. We just you know we hung out a lot together, mm-hmm. and then we went to Clemson together and got there. And I was like, you got cute over the summer. He also grew a lot. Um, and, and that was it. And I remember, you know, people being like, why are you dating someone you went to high school with? There's all these other guys out there. And I was like, nope, he's the one. So we started dating when I was 17 and I'm a lot older than that now. So, Oh, well, it's a sweet story. I like it. Is it is a sweet like story. It. it is a sweet story. We'll um we'll be married 18 years this summer. So um nice. congratulations. We Thanks. We, we dated for many years before that because we still got married at 22, even though we dated for like five years. So um yeah. Nice. Did that answer Mary's question? I think it did. Yes, yes, okay. it did. It did. If you guys have any follow-up questions, any final questions, if you want to go ahead and get those posted, we are going to start to wrap this up. I have enjoyed having you on here and getting to meet you and know you better because this is the first book that I've read from you. And this is the first time we've actually been able to chat. And so it was really, oh, 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 I just remember off topic. Tell everybody you have an actual book signing coming up. So tell everybody when and where that is. Um, yes, on not this coming Saturday, but next Saturday, which is the 15th, um, I will be doing a book signing at the Mercantile in Pendleton, Pendleton, South Carolina. Um, The Mercantile is a great little gift shop um, right on the square. If you know Pendleton at all, it's on the square. Um, 
and I will be there like lunchish time. I can't remember if it's 11 to two or 10 to two, but I'll, I'll be there throughout the day. And um, it's on, it's on all my socials. So you should be able to find it easily enough. And if you don't know, you can just send me a message and I will fill you in. Awesome. Awesome. Um, where is that town in relationship to like Columbia, South Carolina? How far? Um, it's about two hours West. Oh, okay. 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 It it's, if you know where Clemson is and if you live mm -hmm. in the South or you follow college football, you know where Clemson is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it's literally here's Clemson and here's Pendleton. They're right okay. next to each other. So it's, it's in the um, Western corner of the state. Okay. So. Okay. Nice, nice, very exciting. Now, um, are you going to have all of your books with you there? Or are you yes, just gonna have yeah, I'll have all of them there. Um, I, uh, I think I have plenty of all of them. I just ordered some more from my publisher, some more of Living Water because I'm a little terrified now that I'm going to run out. Um, uh, which is a good problem. It's a good problem. Yes, absolutely. So but, so, but yeah, I'll have all of them there and I will be there signing books. So if you've already bought one on Amazon, bring it over. Um, that's perfectly fine. And, uh, and then they'll, we'll probably leave some there at the mercantile at the store, um, for anyone who wants to come in afterwards and pick up some books. Does Arkansas? No, Tanya, Arkansas does not play Clemson. Arkansas is in the SEC, so yeah. they usually play Georgia and um, Carolina, South Carolina. Cox, things like yeah. that. So, yeah. no, and we're in the ACC. Is in the ACC. Yeah, yeah, we are big college football fans, and Tanya's husband's always watching football or baseball <laughs> or whatever else. No, watch. I've Tanya's reading. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never, never seen an Arkansas. I don't even know who what their mascot is, but Razorbacks. Okay, thanks. If it's not <laughs> Clemson, I really am clueless. I, I spent four years in Tiger Band at Clemson, um, played trombone, and uh, and how do you feel about the Clemson quarterback going to the Jaguars? Going to the Jaguars? Um, I mean, good for him. I don't know. I don't. We don't follow. If I I only follow Clemson because I went to Clemson. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't follow pro football in any way whatsoever. I know nothing about it. So it, it means nothing to me. I don't know. Okay. Good for the Jaguars. Yay. I don't know. I know they got, I know they got um, Trevor Lawrence and they got uh, Travis Etienne. And um, so glad they'll be going together, but hopefully I don't know. It, it will improve their team. Um, yeah. They, they I don't not, think they're they've very not popular. looked all that great the last few years. So yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I was like, I didn't, I've never heard of them. So I'm like, I don't know. I know a couple years ago, Deshaun Watson went to the Texans and that was like a big deal. And a couple years before that, a bunch of our players went up to the Buffalo Bills. And so we were like, oh, Buffalo is now the Clemson of the North. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not allowed to watch football because if I watch, we lose. So Ooh. I have to stay away. <laughs> Um, at the beginning of baseball season this year, um, we're Atlanta Braves fans, and um, they were not doing too good. And every time my husband watched, they lost. And then he was coming home in the middle of the afternoon, and it was a day game. And I called him, and I said, we're currently winning. If we make it through this inning, you can't come home. <laughs> right. <laughs> because we're winning. <laughs> He's like, are you serious? And I'm like, yes. You can't come home. Yeah, when but he did when, come home and they won, and things have been better since then. So, but yeah, if I, I like, walk can't. into the room where Clemson is playing, like if someone's watching it on TV, and I walk into the room, the other team always scores, always. And so I am banned. People will text me if they're playing poorly and be like, "You're not watching, are you?" And I'm like, "No." I don't oh my know. gosh, that is too so, funny. Oh my god. Yeah. It's those superstitions, you know, that people adhere to. So I haven't been allowed to watch a game in probably five years or so. so. When it comes to college, we watch a lot of the SEC games, um, of course, for Georgia Bulldogs. Um, we do like to watch Clemson. They've had a very good team, especially the last few years. We've had a very um, good few years. 
I we do enjoy watching um, the Gamecocks, but really they just haven't been themselves the last couple of years. Um, and when they play against Clemson, it's kind of hard to tell who we want to root for. <laughs> I usually go the opposite way of my husband just to make it interesting. <laughs> right. Um, you know, you got to have a little fun in there. Um, but yeah, so all the sports going on here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a, there is actually a Clemson Carolina game in living water. They go to a Clemson game. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a couple of Clemson references in there. They go mm -hmm. to a restaurant called the Tiger's Den. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's you know some wearing of orange. So they go to a Clemson Carolina football game at Williams Bryce. And of course, Clemson wins the game. Of course. Um, uh, I think her, I think Roxy's dad maybe graduated from Clemson. There's some, some Clemson alumni stuff going mm -hmm. on, but there's a couple of little, little Clemson things sprinkled in there throughout the mm -hmm. book. So. I did. I noticed, I noticed. So I, th I think you'd have to be local to kind of catch some of that, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's definitely there. And then like my very first book takes place in Clemson. So it, you know, you write what you know. So, <laughs> well, I have enjoyed having you on here so much tonight. We have had a blast. Um, scanning through the comments, it looks like we got most of our comments and questions from Tanya. Yeah. Tanya, if you will shoot me a message or you can send it direct to Allison, either one, with your email address um, and what format you prefer. If it's, um, Moby for Kindle or a PDF or an EPUB or whatever, um, depending upon the device you have. If you will send the information to either myself or to Allison, um, we'll make sure that you get a copy of her ebook, Living Water. Um, it's a fantastic read. I hope you um, get to it soon so we can talk about it. <laughs> and um, take the box of Kleenex with you. You're yeah. going to need it at least a minimum of three times, but she may need it five or six. It just depends on how much of a crier you are. Um, but yeah, it's, it's worth it. Don't be discouraged by that. Um, it, it really is a good book. Um, you guys are going to enjoy it. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I'm going to pop this back up here one more time. So it will share the information again for you guys. Make sure you also head over and visit Allison's website. We'll give this just yes. a moment. It should also pop that information up again over in the comments for you guys. Um, you can go over there and um, check out all of her other books. You can also find out where to stalk her at. And you can reach out to Allison if you want any signed yes. book copies because She's already told us that she's got plenty on hand for an upcoming book signing. So now is the perfect time to reach out to her for signed copies as well. Yes, please do. Please do. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I had a blast. I hope you did, too. And I did. I love talking with you. It was so much fun. I can't wait to talk to you again. Thank you so much. I had a blast. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much for joining Allison and I. We had a blast with you guys. Bye. Thank you.